Hello, this is Cameron, and welcome to another video by The Lab Maniacs. As always, we have all deck lists from this video listed in the description below, as well as our social media info. Thank you for watching, and enjoy the show. Dan here again. Today, we're playing kind of a fun pod. We all decided to pull out some fast combo decks. So in the spirit of things, I have brought out my Thrasios and Timma Doomtide Brew, which is, you know, fast combo. So as I've spoken of in the past in deck techs and in introductions, this is a fast combo deck aiming to do something like land an early ad nauseum or a doomsday to power out a kill via Laboratory Maniac or Aetherflux Reservoir. We also have Bomberman combo and, you know, similar stuff like that. So today, the first opening hand I pulled was a Scrubland, a Watery Grave, an Island, Limduel's Vault, Arbor Elf, Pact of Negation, and Mystical Tutor. I didn't really think this was good enough. Pact of Negation is not the kind of interaction we want to see in our opening hand. Arbor Elf is uncastable, and therefore my only mana acceleration is useless. And Limdul's Vault and Mystical Tutor are decent, but they're not enough to carry a hand with those kind of weaknesses. So I shipped this one back. The second hand I drew was a Scalding Tarn, a Scrubland, an Island, Toxic Deluge, Doomsday, Limdul's Vault, and a Mox Diamond. So this gives me some interesting options. I can start building up to go for an early Doomsday. And I also have the ability to Limduel's Vault on turn one, setting myself up to easily guarantee a uh, turn two or turn three uh, Doomsday, depending on what I see and what I, you know, pile into. I have Toxic Deluge, which gives me some reasonable interaction against Prosh and kind of maybe something against Zer. All in all, I think this is good enough, so I'm going to keep it and see how it goes. Okay, I will draw for turn. I will play a Scalding Tarn. I'll cast a Mox Diamond. Mm -hmm. Trigger. I'll discard a Scrubland. And after that, I will pass turn. Hello, Siggy here, playing Doomsday Zur again, and I'm going second today. I had to take two Mulligans this time, and I'll go over both of these really quickly. My first hand was Island, Watery Grave, Lotus Petal, Time Twister, High Tide, Chain of Vapor, and Helm of Awakening. Now, looking at this table, basically everyone's on fast combo, and this game is probably going to play out in a way that we're going to race to victory. However, we've also got three blue players at the table, so if you want to try to go off, you should have some sort of stack interaction prepared. Unfortunately, this was not the case with this hand, which was the main reason why I shipped it back. On top of that, we also had two cards that didn't just help ourselves, but also all of our enemies in the form of Helm of Awakening and Time Twister. All in all, this is a really greedy hand that I might have considered keeping if I were up against, like, Carador and Yisan. But looking at this table, I had no interaction, I had things that make everyone's stuff cheaper, that refills everyone's hand, and that's really not where I wanted to be at. Alright, let's go to my second set of seven. I got Ancient Tomb, Underground Sea, Preordain, Talisman of Dominance, Lion's Eye Diamond, Angel's Grace, and Doomsday. For this hand, I somehow felt like nothing really lined up without me getting lucky off the top of my deck. So I had a Doomsday, which, okay, cool, there's a Doomsday in my opening hand. However, I had two lands, one of which only produces colorless mana. I did have a good rock in the form of Talisman of Dominance, and I did have an LED, which uh, could have given me some wiggle room. But I also had the Angel's Grace, which was basically useless if I wasn't going to go for an Adnors. And I didn't really have a way to tutor Adnors. The only thing that would have gotten me deeper into my deck was a Preordain. And 
looking at everything else in my hand, I just felt like it wasn't really enough. On top of that, we have the same kind of issues going on as our last hand, which was no real interaction at all. Not good. So uh, let's go down to six, I suppose. I shuffled up and the hand I got was Island, Bloodstained Mire, Brainstorm, Mox Diamond, Cabal Ritual, Talisman of Dominance. Now, once again, no real interaction going on. However, I thought that I was going to have to keep this hand, absolutely, because in a fast combo matchup, I couldn't really afford to be two cards down compared to everyone. Furthermore, this hand did have some merit to it in the form of Brainstorm plus a fetch land, effectively drawing us another three cards from our deck. That, coupled with the uh, free scry I get from going down to six, would allow me to see a fairly significant amount of cards before anyone would be able to threaten a win. And that's ultimately the deciding reason why I kept this hand. I was fairly confident that I was going to get some form of interaction in my top, say, five or six cards. And I did indeed uh, end up getting rewarded in that way by getting a counterspell of my free scry, which I decided to keep on top. All right, let's see how it goes. Okay, draw for turn. Play a Bloodstained Mire, play a Mox Diamond, discarding an island, and pass turn. Simon here, I'll be palting Prussia. Today I kept my second set of seven. Swamp, Bayou, Wolf, Elvish Mystic, Vexing Shusher, Pyroblast and Defense Grid. This hand is pretty sketchy uh, and the reason I kept it is my table all snap kept their hands and the early Wheel of Fortune should disrupt them while I have a Dork and maybe even the Shusher out. Uh, Defense Grid is a really bad card in this matchup uh, because I'm relying on the other very interactive decks to stop each other from going off, as Prosh is not the fastest deck on the table. Draw. Bio, Elvish Mystic. Pass. Hey everybody, Cobblepot here. For this game, I'm going to be running Brea, Ethereum Shaper. She's the four-color greenless commander that is artifact-oriented, and she's an infinite mana sink that will win the game if you can get her into play and have infinite mana and activate her. This particular build is an eggs build, so you get to your infinite mana by doing traditional egg loops that use Scrap Mastery, Second Sunrise, Faith's Reward, along with Codex Shredder to, to loop. Um, or it also uses Isochrine Scepter and Dramatic Reversal, as long as you have three or more mana and mana rocks on the table. And uh, Paradox Engine also uh, makes it very easy to, to get to infinite. This list is not running uh, some notable combos that people use with her. So there's no World Gorger combo, there's no uh, Oriox Salvagers with Lion's Eye Diamond, um, and because I'm not running either of those, I'm not running Doomsday either. Um, the World Gorger is, uh, there's you know, a lot of arguments that can be made in its favor, but it's uh, too all-in for my tastes. Uh, if somebody disrupts it, there's really no way for you to come back, just because Everything that you have is exiled, and um, that's just not where you want to be. The Ariok Salvagers is, is a similar situation because you have to uh, discard your hand and then just hope that nobody disrupts you. So um, I leave both of those out and just do the standard kind of egg loops that I know that I can protect well and that I know are very uh, reasonable to put together if you're given enough time. My opening hand is Cabal Ritual, Necropotence, Scrap Mastery, Enlightened Tutor, Command Tower, Steam Vents, and Reflecting Pool. So um, this is one of those hands that's, that, that this is really good. I've got, I've got good selection of mana, I've got an Enlightened Tutor to be able to go and get anything I want first turn, and I've got a turn two Necropotence off of Cabal Ritual. 
which is very often going to lead to a turn three win. So um, this is an insta-keep, and we will see where it goes. Okay. Draw for turn. I'm going to play Command Tower and pass turn. On your end step, I will cast a Brainstorm. Uh, I would like to respond by casting a Brainstorm. A brainstorm? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, you know what? Mine's prettier than yours. So I agree. suck it. It's even our logo. That's nice. Okay. Um, does anyone else want to do anything? No. Nope. I have no responses. Well, not for me. Okay. Then I'm going to draw three. Ooh, that's tough. Okay. I'm going to put these two back on top. Go ahead. All right. Draw three. I'll put those two back. So priority again. I'm going to crack Tarn. I'm going to crack Bloodstained Mire. Man, Someone stop copying me. <laughs> You're going to fetch a tropical island, Sige? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get the old tropical island, of course. Oh, no, I'm probably going to make it a watery grave. Tapped? Of course. Would you like to know what I'm about to get? <laughs> a tapped watery grave, perchance? <laughs> if I can find it. <laughs> there we go. Oh, not this again. <laughs> <laughs> We're good. It's, it's right here. Nice. Okay, untap. Draw for turn. I would like to play a bloodstained mire oh my god and i will different edition come on now and i'll pass turn after that okay uh on top upkeep draw for turn play a windswept teeth i'll tap to play a talisman of dominance and I'll play a Lotus Petal. Pass turn. Okay, draw. I'm gonna play a Mana Crypt. Put a Wooded Foothills into play. Blue Chain? No. Oh. Green, green. Vexing Shusher. Now Food Chain. Oh. Actually, you don't have the mana to make it uncounterable. Just kidding. What did foothills fetching? Tiger. Uh, I'm going to Wheel of Fortune. On this one, it says both players must discard their hands and draw seven new cards. <laughs> uh, so, who are you selecting as the other of both? Uh, one, two, all of you. Seems good. Oh, okay. Uh, Cobble, I, do you have responses? I do have a response. I'm going to cast Enlightened Tutor. Actually, I am just going to crack, but I'm not going to respond to the spell. Um, I am going to do something. I'm going to crack Bloodstained Mire as well. Thanks for skipping my priority, Siggy. It's okay. I'm going to get an Underground Sea, and I'm going to cast a Limduel's Vault. Oh, boy. Uh-oh. Sure. I'm not going to respond to your Limdus vault either. Uh, I'm going to go for a quick pee. I play Prosh, I don't care about okay, you Go for do. it. It's going to take me a little while. Can you please not counterspell it? 20 minutes later. This will work. Oh boy. Alright, whereabouts are we? I just picked the five I want. How deep did you dive? I only paid eight life. Or six life, sorry. Okay. Fair enough. So I looked 35 deep. <laughs> so Enlightened Tutor is back on top again of the stack? Uh, yes. Does it resolve? Sure. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I found Mystic Remora. Oh. Okay. 
Uh, so we're going to Wheel of Fortune now. Yep. Any responses? Nope. Sounds good to me. Same. I All right. discard Counterspell and Cabal Ritual. I'm discarding Island Island Doomsday Intuition. I discarded right. uh, Scrap Mastery, Reflecting Pool, Necropotence, Cabal Ritual, Second Sunrise. Yikes. Okay. I'm scrapping a Swamp, Pyro, and Defense Crate. Lotus Petal, Arbor Elf. Pass. Assuming no responses. Okay. Yeah. Safe assumption. Yeah. So, my turn. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. On tap. Beginning of turn two. Draw for turn. I'm going to play a Hallowed Fountain untapped. Shocking. He's ramping. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> One mana a turn every turn. I know it. Um, it's I'm like a fourth year. Mystic Remora. I could never have seen that coming. Yeah, I know. Oh, Dan? Not from a mile away. Dan? I I have no responses, sorry. No Ziggy. response. All good in the hood. Seems like it resolves. And um, with that, I will pass. Cool. Untap. Draw for turn. Cards in hand, everyone? Seven. <laughs> I have six. Everybody five. else has seven. Oh, five, yeah. Yeah, whatever. Let's do it. Uh, Wooded Foothills. Crack. Mm-hmm. Getting a tropical. I will then... Cast a dark ritual. No response. Mystic Remora. Not paying. Called it. All good. Uh, so three black floating. Mm-hmm. I will cast a Chrome Mox. No response. I will not pay. Draw. All good. Mm-hmm. So Mystic, or I'm sorry, the Chrome Mox comes into play. Uh, imprint trigger. I am going to imprint turnabout. Okay. So three black in my pool. Ad nauseum. Response. Um, first of all, ad nauseum, are you paying oh, yeah. the... I am not paying. Draw. Continue. Uh, response. Mm -hmm. Sure. Luster Storm, Storm Count 4. Mystic Remora? No response. Uh, yeah, you can draw. Okay. Hmm. You, you're drawing a lot here, Cole. Did Doing okay. Uh, I'm gonna delay my own Adnaz here. Ooh, nice. Mystic Remora. I am not paying for Mystic Remora. Sure. Someone's gonna untap and win. You're <laughs> letting him Adnaz for zero life. <laughs> right. Good. Yeah. Sure. How many counters does that get? Three. Three. I highly doubt I will last that long. <laughs> but it'll be a nice upkeep if I do. Uh, after that, I got nothing. I'll pass. Okay. On tap. Upkeep. Draw for turn. Go to my main phase. Let's do command tower. Mm-hmm. I'll tap four, making a white, a black, a blue, and a colorless to cast my commander. Simon. All good. No response from me. I got nothing. Ooh. 
Pass turn. And tap. Uh, upkeep odd is out. 10. Draw. Uh, demonic tutor. Mystic Remora? No. Draw. Continue. I got nothing. No response. Smells like a food chain. Really? It's a green sun zenith. Food chain on stack. Um, Mystic Remora? <laughs> Not paying. <laughs> Oh boy. I have a response. Okay. Swan song. Tap Arbor after on tap tiger, tap tiger, vashing shush, sure, sure. food chain can't be countered. By spells and abilities. Or abilities. Okay. Uh anything wait, wait. We're... Do you have anything in response to that? Because that ability is on the stack right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I do not have a response. All right. I do not have a response. Neither do I. Come on, Siggy. What? You're supposed what? to have a response. My response has been wheeled away. And I have to use yeah. my other response to uh, deal with you, Dan. All right. But... So that's a food chain. Yeah. Arbor Elf. Bob. Elvish Mystic. Scoos. Mm -hmm. Um. Pit of Odin Cat comes into play. Um, I don't think he has it this turn. Yeah, I do. I mean, you have enough mana, obviously, but... I mean, it depends on whether he has an outlet in his yeah. hand or not. XL, XL, XL. Alright, well, he probably does have it then. Prosh. Mm-hmm. Well... Uh, uh, responses on, I have no response uh, brush. okay. I don't either. Neither do I. Um, gonna fetch a red source with my burning catacombs. Does anyone want to guess my outlet? Uh, goblin bombardment. No. Nope. Is it sharpshooter? Cause that'd be funny. <laughs> uh, I'm going to shock myself with a blood crypt. It's perforos. Nope. Oh. <gasps> Zulport the Cutthroat. Nope. Blood Artist. Blood Artist. Uh, Smothering Abomination. <laughs> nope. Skull Muncher. Nope. Acorn Cannon. <laughs> nope. <laughs> it, it was my nickname in high school. Little Dick Sticky. <laughs> Goblin Bushwhacker. Because <laughs> I used to whack it off in the bush. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Uh, responses, Cobble? I do not have a response. Oh my goodness, we gave you 30 cards and you don't have a response? <laughs> I don't. I have nothing. I need open mana. <sighs> Siggy? Nope. <sighs> you would like to move to combat in Smork Face Dead? Smoke face dead. All of you. I got nothing. Cobble? I got nothing. Nope. That, uh, that does it. GG. Yep. I had one more card in hand. I almost did it. <laughs> <laughs> that would have that been good. That would have okay. been very good. Yes, a win for Prosh. So in this kind of pod, it's all about the fast combo. People usually keeping minimal amounts of interaction and being as fast as they absolutely can. Uh, my game plan was really only wheel a fortune into something good or wheel away other people's good stuff. In this case, both things happened. People discarded two rituals, a doomsday, intuition, second sunrise, necropotence, a counter spell, and a bunch of other really good stuff that would have put them way ahead of me in the game. 
I also drew a mana crypt on my first draw step, which was amazing because it let me have uh, so much mana available early on in the game. And it gave me a bunch of really good opportunities post wheel. It turns out that wheeling into a demonic tutor, bushwhacker and a bunch of creature fodder is pretty good, especially with vexing Shusher out. Uh, it allowed me to tut for my food chain and really just go off and win with protection. Uh, this game would not have been the same had my Wheel of Fortune not hit the amount of gas it did. Uh, had it not, I would have had to continue the grind and had to find wind cons and ways to keep Prosh alive. Uh, 